Hey everyone, here I'm going to look at the options section of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm on the Xbox Series X and there will be timestamps in the YouTube Movie 2 Movie to the different parts because inside options, which I'm accessing by hitting RB, are general options, assistance options and control options. So if you want to jump to any of these, have a little look in the description and I'll show you them. I'm going to go in the order that I think they're most useful. So first of all, I'm going to show you controls options because I know a lot of people struggle with the sensitivity on the controller and I'm going to show you how you can adjust that if you so wish. Uh, you can also adjust things like key bindings in here. Let's talk about the sensitivity first because I know that's the killer thing a lot of people are looking for. That's over here so I'm using the left stick to access sensitivity. Now before you jump into that you may want to hit X for the preset manager to create yourself a new preset. So I'm going to show you that X and then I can duplicate the current um, profile that I've got. So I've got four profiles going on at the minute, um, but I could duplicate and just create another one because I like making profiles for no good reason. So there I'm on controller profile five. The reason why you may want to do that is then you're not going to ruin your original settings of the default. Okay, so we've got that here. I'm now going to jump into sensitivity. So I'll A button on it. And this is confusing as heck. So let me explain what you're looking at here. Um, you've got these graphs and as you move your left stick around you can see things are happening on the screen. So if I'm moving left and right, can you see there's a little dot on the top left there that's moving sort of down and up. So as I'm moving left it moves down on that one and as I move right it moves up. So this one is your left stick sensitivity along the x-axis which is left and right. So there's a few things you can adjust. You can adjust the sensitivity, the dead zone. This stuff I haven't got a clue. I can't find any help on it. Um, but these are the main ones people seem to want to adjust. Now they're set to minus 50% here, which I think seems to work okay in the game. Um, but if you're finding it too twitchy or if you want to work on it a different way, you can do that here. So the way to test it is this. Um, what I've got here is I'm moving my right stick very gently just to see how it, it reacts left and right. So obviously this is moving my curse as well, which is very confusing. But hey, that's what we've got to deal with. So. You can see how it is there. Now, if I move my right stick, I can adjust the sensitivity while I'm hovering over this bar here, okay? So you can see now that this is moving the sort of the left movement to a more linear approach. So this is saying as I hit left, to go very linear. So, you know, it doesn't really react more. If I swing more, it's just a direct movement. So very, very sensitive now, and that will be probably quite a nightmare in the game. So I think the minus 50% is all right. You've got this kind of curve that gives you this, this sort of more, more natural movement, I suppose. But if you don't like it, that's where you can do it. You can also increase the curve more by going this way. Um, so you get this kind of different thing, but I think the 50% is probably about right. But you may find it tweaks there different. One thing to point out though, is you may find that this you have a, a profile that works really great on one plane and not on another. All the planes feel very different. So a small plane will react very differently to a big plane. So bear that in mind. There's also another thing to point out, which is um, some of the other settings which I'll go through in this movie may override what you do here. So you may want to keep watching to have a little look at the other option. I'm going to show you an assistance options in just a sec. Anyway, dead zone is quite useful. So if you are a bit twitchy with your controller and you like to swing around, so can you see that little dot is moving a little bit and the controller isn't moving. So that's my dead zone at the minute. If I, I've got a slight bit of play there. Now I find this game is very twitchy and I'd like a bit more play often with this. So if I up the dead zone, this just gives me ever so slightly more sort of area where nothing's going to happen on the left and the right before I go. So it just means if, I, if I'm if i wiggling the controller slightly, it's not going to tip my plane and bank my plane. So you may want to up that. That's up to you. If you don't like what you do, go down to here, hit A for the reset, and it'll reset things back to how it was. Right, the Y is your left stick up and down, and we've got exactly the same thing here going up and down. It's just nice and confusing because as you go up to select a new menu, it might flick up over here. Nice and annoying, but you know how to adjust these, so I'm not going to bore you with that. LT is your left trigger, so this adjusts your rudder by default. Uh, and you can see this is set to a diagonal line, which means it's just a constant thing here, which means it's extremely twitchy. They've also got no dead zone on here at all. So as soon as you touch it, it's off. It's like boom. So you may want to adjust this. Um, the only one that will work, I need to remember which way it is. It's not that one. It's the other one because the left trigger can only go one direction. So we ignore that one and we'll do this one. So you could turn it to a curve 
if you so wanted uh, and have it similar to the way the other thing works. I'm a bit mixed whether we need that sort of control or not. You could dibble with it and see what you think. Dead zone, I think you may well want to increase. So we could do that here. And then we've got a bit more play that is not going to go off and go mad as soon as we touch the damn thing. So that's up to you, but I'll just reset it there just for argument's sake. RSX is your right stick left and right. So exactly the same as what we saw with LSX, but this is your right stick. So you can see here as I move the right stick left and right, and they've set this bizarrely on a different style. So we've got the, um, the linear move here with the sensitivity. So you could opt to change that. So it's more like the kind of natural curve you've got on the left and the right. So if you want to mess around with it. And now if you're confused where the rest of them are, you see you've got this little bar on the right hand side here. If you hold down the right stick, press it down, you'll get RSY and right trigger here. It'd be quite nice if RS X was over here, but for some bizarre reason it is not. So you can adjust exactly the same things here and job is all good. Once you're happy with that, you just hit done and then hit Y to apply and save and you are done with the controls options. The controls options is also useful if you want to change things like key binding. So you can jump into, for example, increased throttle. I could go to this one and see what the button is already and, or I could change it if I really didn't get on with it. So I could go in here and press A here I could clear the current input and then put a different input in if I so wished, or you can click on here and see your different inputs there as well. So we'll pop that out though, because I'm not gonna mess around with it. I find it too complicated as it is, yet, let alone changing all the controls for it. I will come back and have a little look at this with the HOTAS flight stick. I've got one on order um, and show you how this uh, you know, behaves differently. But I, I wish with the sensitivity they showed a plane or something with it so you could get an idea of how they're the reaction is you can like i say you can get to this menu while you're playing in the game but then you're setting the settings having a look at the plane going backwards and forwards the pain in the butt but never mind it is what it is so when you're happy apply and save it'll then save it as your thing so go back remember i was saying about assistance options so this is the next thing so assistance options is where you can go in and funny enough change some of the assistance that you've got inside the game now this can can override what you're doing with your controls sometimes so i want to point this out as the second most important area of the options inside microsoft flight simulator so let's have a little look at it so by default it sets everything up on as easy now if you want to see what this is doing uh, quite a useful one for example if we look at piloting you can see easy sets all these things on so you've got assisting la assisted landing assisted takeoff you've got assisted yoke and it's <laughs> It's kind of almost doing everything for you. So that's quite cool when you're just starting off, um, but you may find you wanna go between uh, different ones here. So if you're high, highly uh, hovering over a main section like piloting here, if you hit the right stick, you can go between easy, medium, and hard. Hard will turn everything off, easy turns everything on, um, medium sort of does a bit of a mix. You know, you've got some bits on, some bits off. Um, so you can see this one here has turned it off things like assisted landing, assisted checklist, that sort of stuff. You've also got auto trim, you know, so that might be useful. Trim drives me mad in this game, so you might find that useful. Um, there's some other useful stuff on here like navigation aids. So the landing path, for example, I find extremely useful when you're learning the game and somehow I'd accidentally knocked it off. So if I'm in here, if I want to turn off a specific one, I've, hovered, I've highlighted over it and then I'm using the right stick to go between them so I could turn off landing path. I don't think that's a good idea, but if you want to turn it off, you can. Um, you could turn off route and ray, uh, waypoints and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and if you do, uh, do veer away from the easy, medium or hard, it'll set it to custom here so it warns you, hang on, you've done something a bit weird here, we better make it a custom. Or you can flip back and override these with the easy, medium or hard. So if you decide, for example, you wanted that as medium, you could then hit Y apply and save like so and then it goes aha that's what you want now and uh you're good you know so that's how you do it if you decide no that's not for me you can hit x to reset to default so it'll go oh are you sure and you go yes and then we're back to easy 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 with everything all on so that's you know to protect yourself with everything so we're all cool that is assistance options and it's well worth having a little delve into each thing and seeing what of these you, you want on or off. So for example, you could have landmark markers off if you find them annoying or city markers or airport markers, you know, all this sort of stuff's here. 
Um, you know, we've got the navigation aids that I said was useful, notifications, you can turn this sort of stuff off, like flying tips, objectives, that sort of stuff. Failure and damage, you know, you can have crash damage on if you want. Um, and all sorts of stuff. So we've got that aircraft systems, um, you could turn off unlimited fuel, that sort of thing. Right, jumping out, the last part of options I want to show you is general options. You think, why did you go back to front? Because that's the way I think they're most important. General options, if you go into here, you can start having a little look at things like graphics, if there's any options, not so much on the Xbox Series X. Cameras, so I can see the different camera selections, the default camera used during the flight, so I can change which one that is. I can have uh, smart camera, zoom, focus, free look modes, blah, blah, blah. I can also set the height of cameras uh, for the default cockpit camera. <laughs> you might want to make that a bit higher so you can see over the flaming top of the controls because it's ridiculous, but I guess that's how it is in real life. Um, but there's loads of stuff you can adjust here for the camera. Um, for sound, let's have a little look. You can adjust things like the volumes of the other aircraft, different uh, music selections, that sort of thing. Traffic, we can set what traffic type we've got, the airport vehicle density, you know, all sorts of cool stuff there so you can have more or less life appearing in the in the world. Um, data, you can have different things here. And if you look on the right hand side, it's telling you between what this does. So whether you want to allow internet connectivity during your session, do you want world data graphics, aerial imagery, uh, potentially gigabytes of data, uh, realistic 3D built aliens, blah, blah, blah. So you can turn some of this on or off if you're finding it struggling or you don't want to have that sheer amount of stuff going on. Uh, if you're on a limited internet, you could uh, change your bandwidth, that sort of stuff. Flight model, uh, what do we got there? Doesn't seem to, oh, modern, or you can go here and go legacy and that will very much change the behavior of the flight. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, you've got the mis miscellaneous, so you can change the language, you can change the units of measurement. If you don't like the US system, you can go to a different one. There's metric or hybrid. Uh, you've got the pilot avatar. So these are the little characters that you see. You can have them as default or change them, legal and credits. And then accessibility is, um, I think this is talking about your, uh, whether you want the user face interface spoken. Um, you can also have the interface scale changed, you can have tool tips on, all this sort of stuff here. Um, and you know, hopefully that helps you. If you've changed any of it, it's by flicking right or left and you want to keep it, you hit Y, apply and save, or you can hit X to reset to defaults. Or you can go back and not apply anything. So if I do that and say just discard what I did, I'm not going to change nothing. And that is it, my friends. That is the options of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope that was of some use to you. Um, a little explanation of where you find them and, how, and what all the various different bits do. If it was, give us a thumbs up, please. That's much appreciated. I've put some other stuff about Microsoft Flight Simulator on my gaming channel on YouTube. If you like it, please let me know. Please subscribe to the channel, help me grow it. That would be hugely appreciated. The more love I see from Microsoft Flight Simulator, the more content I will make for it, but also cover many other games, largely on the Xbox Series X, which is my current system. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's any game that you like, um, you'd like me to look at, let me know. Thanks so much for watching.